You know what polymers are now, but do you also know that they can remember things? And they're much better at it than you might think. Better than a goldfish, with three second memory, but also potentially better than us. So what can they remember? You might have heard about uh, polymers that can remember shapes, the shape response of polymers, but also they can remember molecules they've been in contact with. And this is the technique that we use in order to produce our sensors, which is based on molecularly imprinted polymers. Or briefly, MIPS. What is the process of imprinting? You might know biological imprinting. So, if something would hatch from an egg, it would come out and the first thing it would see would follow it all the way around. So that's biological imprinting. Molecular imprinting yeah. consists of four simple steps. Step one. You assemble monomers around the target that you want to detect. Step two, you then polymerize it in the presence of this target, so you form a stable matrix around it. So here you can see the target molecule, which is pink, which is mixed in with the monomer. As the polymerization progresses, the molecular weight starts to increase. So that means that it precipitates out of solution and becomes insoluble. And that's why you see this white color forming and becomes a rigid white block. So after 15 minutes, you can clearly see the polymer is there, and this is what it looks like when it's complete. Step three, we then extract the target from the matrix. And this is when you start to form these cavities that have a very high affinity for the target you want to detect. The polymer is very rigid, so we need something to grind it down to smaller particles. And once we've done that, we can actually start to remove the target from it by washing it with different solvents, which is the extraction process. Step four, the final step, so you then expose this polymer matrix again to the original target that you imprinted with. So that's why it's called the rebinding step. Let's look at how these molecular imprinted polymers work in a little bit more detail and compare them to the biological recognition elements, such as enzymes or antibodies. Here you can see the structure of an enzyme. So what do you see? You can see they have an active site. So the active site is where the molecules are converted. And then around this axis site, is supported by this 3D structure, so in order to make sure that the active site stays intact. Here you see the structure of the molecular imprinted polymer. It doesn't look that different, does it? It has a binding site, which you could compare to this active site, but then rather than having like this 3D structure that's kind of around it, the polymer matrix makes sure that these binding sites remain intact. And what are some of the inherent advantages of using these polymers? Well, you can already see that the polymer network gives it a lot of stability. So inherently, these molecules are very stable. They're also low cost. You can produce them in big quantities. And if you think about the materials you can use, you have much more flexibility. We can make them for things that are really small, such as small ions or small organic molecules or pharmaceuticals. Or we can go bigger towards proteins. But then we can also look at bigger macromolecules, such as bacteria or cells. Now, the binding sites will look a bit different. If you're working with something small, it's nearly impossible to visualize the binding sites. But here you do see an example of a bacteria where you can nicely, with certain techniques, see what this binding site looks like. So you can see that these binding sites exactly match the size and the shape of the molecule or of the bacteria that you want to detect. It's not just based on that, though. Chemical functionalities also play a role. There's been an exponential increase in the use of MIPS for many applications is purification, extraction and catalysis. If you want to know more about our sensor work, have a look at the video here, where you can show how we use these sensors to detect uh, antibiotics and other environmental pollutants. You can also subscribe to our channel if you want to know more about biomes, biomaterials.